We're talking about zombies today, so should we share our zombie survival plans with the people watching at home? We should. We should. But after the video. Yeah. This being the internet, I'm going to assume that most of the people watching have a plan in place of what they do in the event of a zombie apocalypse. As weird as it's going to sound though, George A. Romero, the father of the zombie movie genre itself, never had a plan in place and thought that people that did were kind of stupid. So if you're watching this and you're one of a few people who doesn't have a plan of what to do in a zombie apocalypse, you're actually in a minority. And no, you can't hide in my sick awesome base if the world goes to shit. Even if you don't personally ascribe to the idea that the world might one day end thanks to a zombie holocaust, it's still quite useful to think of what you do in the absolute worst case scenario. Yeah, don't the government have some kind of plan in place for if there's a zombie apocalypse? Yeah, um, the British and American government have both released like statements saying, oh, this is what you should do in the case of a zombie apocalypse. Obviously, their tongues were planted very firmly in their cheek, but the idea is to use a zombie holocaust as a framework for what you should do in case of a more likely emergency, like a terrorist attack or an earthquake or a hurricane or something like that. The idea is to get people to think of like, what would be the emergency supplies I should have and where should I keep them? So, and you know if like the government gets on something, it's a pretty popular idea. Like if the government wants to use this as the way to get the information out to the most people possible, and they use a zombie holocaust as the framework for it, you know it's a pretty popular idea. For most people, the idea of where they should hold up and hide those 40,000 tins of beans was largely popularized by the author Max Brooks in his book, The Zombie Survival Guide. So have you read The Zombie Survival Guide at all? I don't think so. I wouldn't recommend it. It's not great. Some interesting stuff in there about what you should do in the event of a zombie apocalypse. Like, oh, these are the best weapons to use, like these would be the best place to hold up, but Max Brooks just so up his own fucking ass. And his fans are some of the worst people as well, because um, a guy I know, he wrote an article for Cracked, probably one of the most popular articles I've ever done about um, why a zombie apocalypse would fail quickly. I think I've read this. You probably have, yeah. yes. And he goes into that, and he uses George A. Romero's zombies as the base, because he says, well, George Romero invented the idea of a zombie as we know it today, so I use his zombies. And people sent that author, and still do to this day, like long-winded, full-page rebuttals to it, using Max Brooks' book as their source, saying, this wouldn't work because Max Brooks says zombies would do this in this situation. When he says, I didn't use his book at all, I used George A. Romero's movies. Even though they're not real, he used the idea that George A. Romero popularised. Like his version of zombies is the ones he used for that argument. Whereas everyone who tries to read books, well, in Max Brooks' book it says this. And he says, I didn't use that as a guide. He's not the authority on zombies. If anyone is, it was George A. Romero. That's one of the reasons I'm not really that big a fan of the book. But I do know that it popularised the idea of like, people thinking about what they do in that situation. Yeah. So I've given credit for that, but I've also got to like, say, your fans are kind of dicks. Because whenever you try and talk about zombies, there's someone always brings up Max Brooks' book. And the thing is, he's not the authority on zombies. If anyone is, it was George Romero. And he, as we're about to discuss, called the idea of planning what to do in a zombie apocalypse fucking stupid. Stupid. <laughs> Just stupid. You know me. I'm stupid. <laughs> as a self-professed zombie nerd, Brooks of course considers himself a fan of George A. Romero, so it must have come as quite a slap to the face when he asked George A. Romero what he thought of his book and he told him it was stupid. So what was George Romero's opinion of it then? Um, he actively mocked the idea of trying to survive a zombie apocalypse, because what's the fucking point? Yeah. And he actively disliked the idea of planning for the eventual downfall of society. You do have to kind of agree with George on that one because it is kind of weird to actively plan for the end of the world and relish the idea of one day being able to brain your neighbour without any legal recourse of a sledgehammer covered in barbed wire. He really disliked the idea of people planning for a zombie apocalypse and didn't like the question of, oh, so what would you do if you found yourself in one of your movies? Because usually he'd either say, die, or when people asked him like specifically, so how would you plan to survive? He'd just say, go ask Max Brooks. So I spent a lot of time thinking about what I do in a zombie apocalypse and it's kind of hurts a little bit to know that the guy who invented the zombie genre itself, as we know it today, was like, you're a fucking idiot, Carl. <laughs> if I'd have met him and I'd talked to him about this, he'd gone, you think about this too much. Because that's what he said to Max Brooks. When Max Brooks like wrote that book, and he asked George, so what do you think about it? He went, you think about this too much. Because <laughs> obviously, George Romero never intended the movies to be about the zombies. It's yeah. about how people react to the zombies. Why did these people keep them here? Because they still believe there's respect in dying. <laughs> 
I think a quote from him that I'm probably going to butcher the shit out of is, the movie's not about the zombies, it's about holding a mirror up to people and to humanity. The idea is like how easily he, like society breaks down when um, there's no laws or anything. It's like, uh, what is it, Day of the Dead or Do um, Diary of the Dead? Like where it shows you the bit at the end, which is a bit on the nose, but it shows you the people like sh using zombies as like uh, target practice and stuff. A couple of hometown Joes who went out to shoot at targets. But that day they used people, dead people. You know, just for fun. Are we worth saving? That's his take on it. That the zombies are inconsequential to the main story of like, well, what would people do in a world where there's no consequences? And usually it's be a dick. <laughs> yeah, The Walking Dead's quite good at that because early seasons, the threat is obviously starts off being the, the walkers, the zombies. But then as it progresses, the they become the background. Yeah. And people start to use them as like weapons against That's other it, yeah. people as well. It's the same basic concept as George Reynolds. Like the zombies, they're a threat and they're an ever-present threat. But the real thing you should worry about is people. Mm. And the Walking Dead handles that in basically the same way where after the initial threat of the zombies, you know how to deal with them. The real thing you need to worry about is how do people react in this situation? It's always interesting, every villain they bring up, when you get a bit of their backstory, you find out that they're just someone... A normal in, person. Yeah, a normal person who went through some stuff and became this person. Well, that's, that's the Joker happened. way of looking at it. It's, oh, it takes his one bad day for a person to become a villain. And that's what the movies and TV shows are supposed to explore. But then everyone's like, no, zombies! Yay, zombies! What would you do in a zombie apocalypse? I get a lightsaber because it instantly cauterizes the zombies' wounds. And then people think about that when the people who created them, their intention was, no, I want people to think about people. I want you to like self-introspect on how you'd react. In the, I, want, I don't want people to, like in their head think, yeah, I can't wait to smash some fucking zombie skulls in. I want them to think, why does society break down so easily? <laughs> it, it's, not, it's not necessarily how you would survive. They want people to think about it on a deeper level, and it must be really frustrating as a creative person to see people going, yeah, I'd love to smash a zombie's head in with a baseball bat. I would wrap my baseball bat in barbed wire, just like Negan. <laughs> so I always found it weird that, like, with the exception of like The Walking Dead and George R. Romero's movies, like, almost every other movie starring zombies is always zombie-focused, despite the fact that the original creator of the genre never intended it to be that way. So like, all these things like Z Nation, Dead Snow and stuff like that. It's always, the crux is, we're gonna watch these people kill zombies. How many ways can we kill these zombies? And I find it weird that the film that actually understood George A. Romero's original vision the best is Shaun of the Dead. Oh my God. <laughs> She's so drunk. <laughs> Which, what's the tagline for Shaun of the Dead? Do you remember it? Scratch, my, scratch my brain now, huh? It's a romantic comedy with zombies. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because the whole point is, it's not about the zombies, it's about the people, and it's a story you tell with zombies in the background. And it's weird how a satire of the genre is the one that actually got that the best. Do you know, I don't think I've got it in me to shoot my flatmate, my mum, and my girlfriend all in the same evening. What makes you think I'm taking you back? People don't like it when the creators come out and say stuff like that. That's why I find it amazing that Max Brooks watched all George A. Romero's movies, considers himself a massive fan of his work, and still didn't pick up on the fact that it's not supposed to be about zombies. And then would ask him in person, so what do you think? And then George Romero says, well, I think you thought about my movies more than I did. So yeah, if you did have a chance to meet George Romero while he was alive, I really hope you didn't ask him about what he'd do in a zombie apocalypse, because chances are he would have slapped you right in the face for doing so. Just old man slaps as well, they're the worst at it. have a really rough hand. And you wore those glasses as well, so you won't be hitting back. You can't hit a guy with glasses. <laughs> so even though we've just said that George A. Romero, the father of the zombie movie genre, hated the idea of planning for a zombie apocalypse, fuck it. Tell me in the comments what you do in a zombie apocalypse. So you know what my plan always was? What? Fuck it. I'd just drink and then just let it happen. I don't care. Because <laughs> I thought about this, and as I got older, and I thought about it more, and I realised, I could go to a supermarket, but then hundreds of people go to the supermarket, and then there's zombies there, okay. I could go here, no. Right, everywhere I thought, and everywhere I planned went, oh, this, it just, you know, so I thought, fuck it, I'll just get drunk. So my plan is just get absolutely fucking hammered, and just see what happens. But you know what? I'm just as likely to survive as any fucker else. I'm just gonna say, Brad, my favorite thing to do when discussing zombie apocalypses isn't discussing how I'd survive, 
It's deconstructing other people's ways to survive because I'm an asshole. So what I'd like to do is you tell me your method for survival and I'm just gonna pick it the fuck apart. I always had two, one okay. for the back home, one for here. So go for the one for here. We're in a city, we're in Sheffield, it's a city. Okay, so my one for here, um, at some point, basically after everything, I wanted to establish myself at the top of a skyscraper. Okay, so how many people live in skyscrapers? Uh, well, a couple, thousand, a couple thousand, right? And they have key cards to get in. So how are you going to get into the skyscraper? Well, you got to break a window on the lower floor. So that's going to let zombies get in. Yeah, so but that's the lower floor. It's the lower floor. Yeah. And you don't think zombies can use stairs? No, well, my, my plan was you barricade the top two floors on the oh, stairway. Okay. So, so no what, would you, what happens if you need supplies? Uh, I would use the lift. But it wouldn't which, be... Which no, isn't no. going to work. What would happen is I would the actual lift shaft, I would have the lift... Out of where, I was like, the lift of the bottom floor. The lift wouldn't work anyway. Yeah, so what I would do is I'd get my own ropes and pulley system and so I would lift my supplies up Where there. are you going to get for a skyscraper? Are you, where are you going to get a skyscraper's worth of rope from? Well, it wouldn't be from the bottom floor. I'd have a way in that was slightly... Like, I'd, obviously, I'd get a way in that was slightly higher up, probably from a rooftop. Because then the zombies so you get the, the rooftops roof. and you're going to jump into the skyscraper? No, no, I'd have... Uh, I'd get like wooden beams and stuff and build them across. So where are you going to get the wood from? I imagine from a nearby shop. So how, how are you going to carry all this wood? Because you can't drive. I, well, I can drive. I just you can drive. You've got a car. This, this, so you steal a car then. Well, I'd have to steal a car. Yeah. You steal a car. Okay. Also, how are you going to get like, all the supplies you need up a flight of stairs? This is what I love about this. <laughs> People always go, "Oh, I barricade myself in my rooms." Okay, so you barricade yourself in. You got three weeks worth of food. When you run out, how would you get out? So I do. I take down the barricade. That's not a fucking good barricade, then, is it? Oh, I would climb out the window. So how are you going to get back in? Oh, a ladder back up. So you're saying during this entire time you were barricaded in, someone could have just got a ladder and climbed up into your house? <laughs> well, no, because what I'd do is I'd hide the ladder. So you'd hide the ladder before you built the barricade? Yeah. Okay, so where would you hide a 20-foot ladder where no one would be able to find it? Uh, oh, I'll put it, I'll put it under some, some grass or something. Oh, okay, okay. And then you'd barricade yourself in. Yeah. And then you'd climb back out and then you'd get the ladder. And then once you've climbed in and you barricade yourself in, the ladder's going to stay outside your window? Oh no, I push it down. So people will better find a ladder outside your house <laughs> and you'd be trapped inside your house and they can just carefully put the ladder up and then climb up and steal all your shit. So, oh no. So I'd, uh, I'd pour boiling water on them. So how are you going to boil the water? Because, oh, the oven. You got your oven upstairs then? I'd steal some gas from a, uh, a sh uh, B and Q. Oh, so you're going to carry a, like a propane tank up a ladder and put it through your window. <laughs> And I love doing this, and just the stumbling people do. And in their head, they're going, like, you can see their entire world crumble as they realise, I wouldn't survive. I'd be fucked. And then usually people, after that, they come on, they get on board with my idea of just sacking it all off and getting drunk. When people think about scenarios like this, obviously, you're the main character of your own story. In your own head, you are the hero of your life. They always think, yeah, I'd be the one who survives. In Mad Max world, I'd be Mad Max. Chances are, you would not be Mad Max. You'd be the guy strapped to the front of the war boy's car, <laughs> serving as their blood bag. That's what most, that's the reality for the majority of people. Because in those scenarios, there was only a handful of people left. And it's either through sheer dumb luck they survive, or their skills and, re, uh, their skills and the resources they have available. People in these, they always say, oh yeah, I'd go here. I'd go to like Asda and I'd lock all the doors. It's like, so for Asda. a start then, You never go to a supermarket. Everyone exactly. goes to a supermarket. And he says, so if you go to a supermarket, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, do you know how to lock the doors? No. Do you know how to get into the back room? Because there's a key that locks them up and that's usually kept on a place. Do you know where that's kept? No. And that's usually locked itself. Do you know where the key to that thing? No. So what would you do then? Oh, I'd barricade the door. What with? Shopping trolleys. And you're going to, that's you on your own. What about when the food starts to go off and rocks? Where are you going to put it? Oh, I'll throw it out the back door. Okay, so you're going to throw out like 500 kilos of rotten potatoes out the back door. Really? I had a friend from back home who was like, uh, oh, I know that there's, uh, there's this place nearby. He's like, it's one of the, the police um, places where they store the riot gear and the guns. I go there first. And the first thing I said to him is, How are you, many are you the only people? person who knows about this? No. For a start, there's the police officers who would still be working at this point. Yep. Because obviously they're swamped. This is the up. start of it, and they would continue to work for probably. And about... then the military would be there, and if they found you stealing guns, you would be shot on. Site. Then I was also like, "How do you get into this place? Oh, find a way in." Yeah, you know it's probably locked tighter than most places because it's full of guns and it's the UK. Also, as well, right? Because it'd be it'd be locked down because it's an emergency. And also, the, I mean, not even locked down. It'd be in use. Yeah. <laughs> and whatever police officers were still alive would probably. Get, it's like I've always found that like, people always say, "Oh yeah, go get a gun." Where? You know how you prepare for it? You uh, dig up your garden, build a bunker, and fill it with enough food to last a year. And then you've got to do this in secret, though, because chances are your entire fucking neighbourhood would hear about this. So what's the first <laughs> thing your neighbourhood's going to do? Oh, shit, I'm out of food. Hang on, 
Didn't that weird guy down the road have a bunker full of food in his back garden? Yeah, well, this is what I said. Great plan, Brad. I said this in a previous video, Carl. You do like to ruin things, I don't do. You? It's one of my favourite things. I do love ruining things for people. I really do. I think George Thanks Romero, watching, George Romero would be proud of me. I would be, pr I, I would be proud of me. I imagine if he was alive and he watched this video, he'd just click the like button. He'd never tell me, and I'd never know it was him. But in my head, I'd secretly hope that, yeah, there's a chance. There's a chance that he searched and clicked it and went, well done.